hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel hope you're having a great day so here we are about to unbox the new tamron 28 200 millimeter lens that got shipped to me from imstudent.com this is incidentally the second lens i purchased from them and the first one was a 7 artisan 35 millimeter lens which you can see in my other videos so let us go first forward with the process of unboxing and of course i would like to put a disclaimer that this is not sponsored by tamron or imstudent.com i purchased the lens on my own and my opinion is mine alone i was not asked to you know promote this product so there we have the lens box opened up the courier box and in that we can see the actual original Tamron box that is coming out so this is a variable aperture lens f2.8 to 5.6 and it comes with a two years warranty so we will have to remove that seal to unseal the box so inside the box we will have some papers as usual the first one would be the Tamron service warranty card and then we will have the other papers of the lens you know the user manual and stuff that we don't really need to use and then the lens itself wrapped in some kind of cover and a cardboard wrapping not the most impressive packing of a lens i must say but it gets the job done i mean a lens that costs you around 54k or you know 64k officially should have more padding on it that's what i said. and it doesn't even come with a lens carry bag i remember purchasing a sigma 50 millimeter f1.4 it came with a sigma lens cover bag so yeah this one comes in a small pouch and in which you have the lens and the other lens elements so there you go that is your lens it has a tamron lens cap in the front and it is meant for sony e-mount so that's the back lens cover the front lens cover and there is this small flower hood which can be of course detached and fixed in the other way around if you're not using it so one interesting fact about this lens is the lens is designed in japan it is uh, made in vietnam and the lens hood is made in china so yeah so three countries were involved in making this and of course it is bought by me in india so this lens kind of promotes the business between four countries right here and you can see there is this lock button on the lens i wish there was an afmf button instead of the lock button i mean the lock button just keeps it locked at 25 28 millimeter if you want to uh, but i wish there was that autofocus and manual focus button so that i could toggle fast between them in fact there is no other buttons or meters anywhere on the body it's a very minimalistic design and it's a very light wet lens fully fit for mirrorless body so yeah that's all you have in the box you know i have kept it in front of you overall it's a very good lens and i will shortly take it out for some outdoor activities So I took the lens out to my garden in the evening and here are some of the test shots that I have with this lens. So 
you can see this was shot at about f2.8 28 millimeter and if you zoom in you can see the details are quite good at the edges of the flower without any chromatic aberration whatsoever you can even increase the shutter speed to be faster so that you know you can darken the background more and you know in post-production using curves you can even totally make it a blackout so that the you know the white flowers or the white petals stand out against a darker background so anyway that's another topic so you can go in a little closure also this was shot at 30 millimeter f 2.8 still it still maintains the aperture of 2.8 even at 30 millimeter so even now the details are quite prominent you can even see certain specks of dust on the petals and everything even this flower looks quite sharp I was quite satisfied with the result from the lens I mean with 28 millimeter you can go as close as 6.5 inches to the subject and that makes the you know background really blur out really blur out and if you zoom in really close you can you know pass off this photo as a macro shot from a you know a actual macro lens I mean if you're seeing it in a mobile phone people will probably not notice the quality difference between a full frame sensor shot and a 100% crop from a full frame sensor shot So here the focus was on the you know small blooming flowers rather than the main subject you can make a decent crop like this to make an interesting composition out of it I was just testing out my lens and you can see the bokeh on the right is coming in really good here of course you have focus on the flower and the other parts are kind of out of focus this was taken on a slightly higher ISO you can if you zoom in at 100% you will notice there is a slight noise on the petals this was taken at 400 ISO and just to keep the shutter speed really high overall I was quite satisfied with the details of this lens and its semi macro capabilities This is one of the photos where I went in manual focus and I got some details in the inner holes of the flower like you can probably see the pollen grains and all. You can even see the slight dust on the petal surface. And I don't see any significant fringing or chromatic aberration if I would not really consider this details on the edges as a chromatic aberration maybe it's just how the flower is or even if it is I mean it is not much noticeable when you are seeing at the full picture here are certain wider shots of flowers you can see how you can blur out the background using the f2.8 and these photos if you really crop heavily it can once again pass off as an actual macro shot because of the details on the subject I don't really know what exactly this is this is the entire flower or part of the flower I'm, I'm not expert in botany I'm sorry <laughs> you can see how the selective focus works here like you know the shallow depth of field on the flowers to create a dramatic touch I will be putting up all these photos in the link in description below you can download it yourself and check out how you know you like the photos or you know if it 
makes you decide on your buying decisions for this camera and this lens. You can see the sharpness on the leaf here, it is quite good. All these pictures are in JPEG, I didn't shoot in RAW as they were just test photos, I'm probably not going to use them much anywhere else. In the corner you can see the, <coughs> the bokeh looks quite good, it is not distorted much, in fact it is still quite circular even at the edges. I was quite satisfied with the bokeh of this lens and definitely the focus. I would be interested to see how it performs if you put it on some even better camera bodies like the A7R4 or something but probably people who buy an A7R4 do not buy a third party lens, just my thoughts. So overall these are the sample photos and you will find them in the link in description below, you know you can try them out, you can check them, you can let me know if you do some interesting post-production on them or what you like about them what you don't like about them thank you very much